Well, today on Nation, we're talking about how to dominate your market, how to dominate your area, be the one and only the head of your area, and just all around kill it. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up everybody, Jersey here from WCRWindowCleaner.com and of course you are here. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, have a look around. Thank you, thank you, thank you every week I say thank you to you guys who are out there in the trenches ordering your supplies through me, letting me be your rep. I genuinely appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you need a rep, or you want a rep, because I want to be your rep, for anything window cleaning or pressure washing related, save my number. It's 862-312-2026. And at the end of the show, we're going to give you a code for 5% off your entire ordering order only if you order through me. So don't be like the dude who decided to ruin my day and be completely rude to me because he didn't order through me. I can't add that on later, nor will I. So please order through me. Uh, either way, 862-312-2026, and go out there and, and 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 review the show. If you're on YouTube, you're watching it, give us a comment. That would be absolutely epic. Share it, comment on it, whatever. We have like thousand-something listeners every week. And uh, you guys are the army of uh, awesomeness out there, so thank you. Either way, let's get right into it. I'm speeding things up a little bit more. Uh, with this. But uh, first off, I do want to say a few quick shout outs this week. I want to say what's up to Steve-O, the man. Steve-O, if you haven't checked out his channel, uh, definitely, definitely do it. He's awesome. Got to hang out with him a little bit more at the convention a few weeks back. Fluff Daddy from Fluff Daddy Cleans, another genuinely awesome dude. Uh, What's up to you also? Uh, Justin Monk, I want to say what's up to him, man. We hung out a ton. He's such an awesome guy. Go check out SEO. Uh, if you need SEO, check out Justin Monk SEO. Absolutely, what he can do is mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. So go check him out. Also, uh, and yeah, just, just go say what's up to those guys. But anyway, this week on Nation, we're actually talking about domination. Now, this sounds a little bit weird, right? Because... In, you know, your kind of sense, you you think, well, dominating means that I have to be the biggest. Or dominating means I have to have the most guys on the biggest facility and the blah, 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 blah. It's not what it means. Dominating your market, your space, your area, just dominating in general does not mean that. It just means that you are the one that most people think about. When it comes to window cleaning, you're the guy with the assumpted, uh, assumptive uh, huge business. You're the industry leader. You're the guy who knows everything. And if you want the best of the best, they go to you. That's how it is. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to get everybody because that's fine. There's always going to be a guy out there charging half of what you're charging. Don't chase that. You're racing to the bottom. That's dumb. That is dumb to do. Don't do that. But what it does mean is that when somebody knows uh, somebody talking about window cleaning or pressure washing or carpet cleaning or whatever service you do, the one thing that they're going to know is uh, these guys are the ones. And there's a few ways to do that. Uh, Even if it's a perceived value or a perceived kind of notion that you are the biggest, the best, the most informed, uh, it's fine because you will be there, right? That's why you're listening to this. Is you know that you're going to be epic. You know that you're going to be awesome. Even if you may be smaller now. Even if you 100% believe you are the biggest in your area. Awesome. You still may not be dominating your market. And there's a few ways to do that. But, but the whole thing about dominating your market is presence. You have to be present and in front of people and everywhere to be able to dominate. Think of something in your area. Now, you guys are all across the, the world. We have listeners in Australia and UK and what's up, by the way. If you're watching on YouTube, comment down below where you're from. If you're out of uh, country, I would love to see. But uh, we have people all over. But in your area, you know 
and you don't even have to tell anybody, you don't have to tell me, you don't have to do anything, just in your brain, think of a service, anything, but you see their trucks everywhere. You think heating, air conditioning, or or a mechanic, or a service, or a carpet cleaning company, or a, anything. Everybody knows that company that's everywhere. Their, their stuff looks amazing, and you know you don't even have to check prices, but you know they're going to be a little bit more. But you know, like, that's what you do. That's where you go, right? It's kind of the same concept with a lot of other kind of bought things. Not even in our industry. But if you go and you get a, uh, you know, say you're into bikes, uh, which I am a little bit. If you have one specific bike company that, you know, all the other bikes come here and then there's that one bike that's here always, it's like, man, if you got that, you're serious, right? Uh, tools, another thing, woodworking. There's tools out there uh, called Laguna. Laguna is one of them. Uh, but everything that they have is just on another tier. There's another one called Festool. If you're a tool guy, you know what Festool is. You can buy a Festool thing for twice as much as the next one. But when you have Festool, it's like you decided to get the top. Like, it's just known. They're everywhere. The presence is known. And the underlying uh, uh, idea of them is that they are the best. They dominate the market. Right? And that's what we want to do. And I know I compare us in window cleaning and pressure washing and everything else. I compare us to a lot of other industries that don't necessarily match up. Right? I talk about McDonald's or restaurants and things. But business is business. You could be selling window cleaning. You could be selling pressure washing, or you could be selling teeth whitening, right? And it's all a business. The business side of it still works the same, even if different aspects are tailored a little bit different. So that's why we talk about the business side of it. But look at that and see for yourself and those companies or that product or that tool or that whatever, how do they dominate? And here's a couple of suggestions that uh, I think is how you dominate. Uh, And the first one is gonna be meeting your competitors. There's no specific, um, you know, top five or numbered or they're just in any order. But meeting your competitors is huge. And not just because it's a cool thing to do, but it's because you can see what they're doing. You can kind of see how they are and where you stack up. But the other thing is, is that even if it's more important, because it really is, I'm not into spying. I'm not into um, trying to match the Joneses. I don't see that as being something, it's not a competition against everybody else. It's a competition from who you were yesterday. If you're better than who you were or where you were yesterday, man, you're doing good. But the other thing is is that they can see you. And this is an interesting concept, but I'm gonna tell you a story. I had a guy in my area who I had seen forever, always seen him, always saw him. He was always on route. He was the guy with the magnet on his truck. Cool, a nicer truck anyway. Uh, nice guy. And I always was like, hey man, nice to see you. You know, we'd be cleaning storefronts, you know, guys would, I'd be training. So I'd be standing around talking to him while the guys are whatever. And um, I'd ask him to come hang out, come down, come, come, come up. He was in the city right below. Come up, hang out. I'll buy you lunch. Come up. No. No, 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 come on, come on. I asked him six, seven times to come up. And one time um, uh, we had swapped numbers and everything else. And we just had to talk about something else. I said, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Tomorrow's Friday. Come up and uh, let's have some lunch. You can see my facility. We'll talk shop a little bit, but we'll just hang out. I'm gonna, he's like, ah, sure, whatever. Let's do it. We've been talking about it for so long. Let's do it. He came up the next day to have lunch. I brought him through my building, brought him through everything. Now, mind you, our our business was a little bit more uh, regimented with logos and everything was colored and wrapped and it was just, you know, put together very specifically uh, on that. He came up and he was so intrigued that he says, you know what? He's like, I'll never be able to compete with you. I said, well, it's not a competition. That's not really what this is about. We're just... I thought it'd be cool. Maybe you could see the building, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He says, well, let me do this. He says, I also do lawn care and the windows are kind of like an extra thing. I'm just going to give you my company, my window side. Just 
Make sure that they take care, they're taken care of, and they're done right. Just do that for me. And I said, well, that's not, you know, that's not as well. Anyway, we walked out. I bought them lunch. We hung out, and I got an entire company. That was a very small company. Mind you, he had maybe 25, 22 or 25 route jobs. Nice guy I just always talked to all the time. But what it was was then he saw the other side of the company and the other company and went, well, okay, this is on another league than where I am. And he did genuinely care about his customers. Now, this isn't going to necessarily happen to you, but I found it very, very interesting. And I still do this day. That was probably uh, eight years ago, probably. You like that? I don't know what that was. But eight years ago, I talked to this guy. And I still found it interesting that he took that side of it and was so kind of starstruck in how a business could be run that he just realized that he would not do that with his business and he just wanted kind of out of that to be able to focus on what he had so he could take that lawn side and make it kind of what we had done with Windows. Very, very interesting. But letting somebody else see you also allows them to uh, understand that you're maybe, even if you're little, but that you're making the effort to talk to them, that you're somebody who could be a friend, who's somebody they could send work to, or somebody you could be up on the tier. Now, think about this. Think about if you had every competitor in your area know you by name and knew you as a nice guy, what would that do? That would put you as in everybody knew you, so every one of those guys would be talking about you if they needed to have something subbed out, if they needed to you know, pass work to you, if they needed some help, if they needed anything, you're the guy that they know. That's what meeting your competitors does is it just puts you in the front of their brains. And no, I'm not talking about stealing stuff from them. I'm not talking about them stealing stuff from you. I did have a competitor at one time. We always kept one of our lists up on the board behind me and we're talking and he's doing this the whole time. Yeah, I know that's. And he's just blatantly looking at the list. I'm like, oh, let's go in the other room. Like, I get it. I get it that not everybody's as awesome as you are. And not everybody is going to be out there for good. But that's the thing about meeting your competitors. It's huge. Meet them and be nice to them. it, It will pay you dividends, I promise you. Another way to do it is to be everywhere. Now, this whole concept comes down to presence. Now, a lot of times, I would say probably once every two weeks, somebody on a forum or Facebook or something posts something that says something along the lines of, should I be on this golf course scorecard? Should I be on this menu? Should I be a sponsor this little league team? Should I sponsor this demo derby car? Well, in straight ROI numbers, no. You're not going to make the money back on a golf scorecard ever. Uh, yes, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, but I've done a lot of them. You, you just It's not going to happen. People out there playing golf, they're either happy they're playing golf, they want to play more golf or drink or whatever, be away from the family and just hang out on the golf course, or they're doing really bad and they're not happy. No one's looking to buy things when they're on the golf course, unless you're there making the bid. Anyway, Little League teams, never in the history of anything are you going to actually get an ROI unless you, it's so little. They sponsor a team that, you know, one of the parents, oh, I need my house washed. Thanks for sponsoring the team we do. And then maybe you're breaking even. But these are not things to go out there and be, uh, you know, ROI kings or queens. That's not what it is. What it is, is that I've sponsored Little League teams. I've sponsored ball fields. Uh, field, uh, yeah, baseball, diamond, I don't know, banners on that stuff. I have uh, sponsored uh, bleachers sounds weird, but that's what they call it when you put a banner on backsides of bleachers and open open areas. I have done a ton of different things, and I can't even remember all of them. But uh, people are always like, "Well, if they don't work, why do you do them?" Well, because even if it doesn't work, my logo is everywhere, right? Every feel to every ad is the same, and it's everywhere. The logo recognition is everywhere, 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 everywhere. Presence is domination. It sounds ridiculous, I know. But if you can be everywhere, the Little League team, everybody who sees the Little League team, now they're not thinking about buying windows because they're watching their kid not suck as bad as they did last week, right? But they see that logo. They see that you're building this thing up where 
all of a sudden they see you at the you know parade you got to float in the parade or you're giving out free this or you have back to eddm and and uh, marketing pieces and your Facebook targeting. They see it on Facebook. They see it in their mailbox. They see it on the bleachers. They see it in the stadium. They see it on the Little League. They see it everywhere. You're dominating. The reason that those companies that you, that you know in your head are dominating is because you see them everywhere. And the first time that this kind of like popped up in my brain is something that would really be bigger than I thought or ever gave it 10 was this is way back when I bought my first pressure washing truck right a truck dedicated to that because i wanted to be able to put graphics now, this is years ago right it was me and one other guy at the time uh and uh i showed up at someone's house and they said uh man yeah no i really appreciate you coming out and we see your trucks everywhere and I, uh oh yeah oh thanks yeah we, we we travel quite a bit and i was thinking about them like whoa like they were excited to have us because we were everywhere but we weren't. We had one truck, right? It's. I know that people say the fake it till you make it, but the thing about it is, is that if people assume that you're everywhere or they see your picture of 20 trucks, they know you're doing well. They know that a lot of people are putting their trust in you and they can too. And that's where being everywhere really, really helps with dominating. Really, really helps with dominating. Just anything you possibly can to get that brand out there, make sure, make sure that not everything is different. Make sure it's got the same exact feel because it gets embedded in their brain, embedded in their brain. And when they see it in an ad or in the flyer or on the Facebook or something later, it's embedded in their brain that they already trust you. It's a very interesting concept. Read up on it if you haven't. Super, super, super interesting. Uh, the next way uh, is wrapping your trucks. Now, Bobby Walker, if you know him from, I always mess it up, Life of an Entrepreneur, right? Sorry, Bobby. I'm sorry if I messed it up. Bobby is uh, one of the greatest humans ever to be uh, on this earth. But uh, Bobby just wrapped all of his stuff and they look sick. He shows up to a job site and he's got his estimate car, two pickup trucks, all wrapped the exact same way. That's dominating. That is what you see because those trucks are so flashy and catchy. Now, there is a wrong way to do it. If you put too much information like you're rolling billboard, it's ridiculous. Put one thing on there, people will call you, you upsell on the rest. Don't clutter it up. But when you wrap a vehicle, now, every time it's driving, the, the people catch it. Even if they're not reading it, they see it, right? Out of the corner of the eye, they see something. Uh, like Subliminally, they see it. It's again, you're being everywhere, you're putting that in there. What gets more traction than the vehicles that are out in the field every single day for eight hours a day? Eight hours a day they're driving around. That's all advertising. You're driving a billboard for people to get logo recognition. Wrap your vehicle. People go, oh, well, it's too expensive. Is it too expensive or is it expensive? Because if you're saying it's expensive, yes, it is. But so is a house, and yet a lot of you own those. Right? It's what it's worth to you, the value of it. And the value is going to be just, you'll have a wrap for, say, five years before you end up having to redo it. That's a long time, even if it doesn't seem like five years of eight hours a day, every single day, people seeing it. There's nothing, nothing out there that can get the kind of return and ROI for a single investment than wrapping your vehicles. Nothing. But again, stick to the flavor that you want, the feel, the look, the everything, and um, it's going to help you kind of be seen. Uh, check out Bobby Walker, by the way. Another awesome, awesome dude. Uh, the life of... Life of an entrepreneur. Always screwed up. Bobby Walker, you know who he is. Uh, but another way that you can is just looking as pro as possible. Now, you've seen the guys, usually pressure washers because they're uh, bleach resistant really in SH, but um, they wear the NASCAR shirts, right? The super, super colorful ones. Rob, you've seen Rob in every show ever. I don't think he takes this stuff off. Uh, those shirts, you're like, yeah, but they're 65 bucks a piece. Yeah, but they don't get stained. They don't get bleached out. They just always look awesome like that. And now you're driving or you're walking around being wrapped, basically. Something like that makes it so that you uh, exert a presence to you. And that's what dominating is. Having shirts like that, having uh, hats. If you wear hats, they got to be logoed in the same color. If you're wearing car hearts or jackets, they got to be logoed in the same letter. I know a guy named Wesley Bloom. 
Uh, Bloom, Bloom, Bloom. I always mess up his name. Super, super amazing dude. He puts big vinyl decals, his company logos, on his surface cleaners, on his buckets on a belt, on his normal bucket, on everything. Everything he possibly can, he gets a logo on. Why? Because that is what puts you apart. It looks like you care about the company. It looks like you're, you're, you're so fixed in your company, your branding, that all that stuff just happens. That stuff just gets, even if people don't see it, they see it, right? So branding everything, being as pro as you can, that is huge. It puts you up on another tier of being the dominating company, even if you're, not, even if you're by yourself, but you have that shirt and your shirt matches your truck, and your bucket that you're carrying to the job site has your logo on it, or is wrapped for that matter. Yes, I know not all of us are in that financial position that we can reinvest in our company like that. I get that. But there's a lot of things you can do to get towards that on the cheap as you're working your way up to the big leagues. And that's one of those things. It's just creating that presence. If you look like some guy who just kind of does this sometimes, maybe, then you don't really look like the dominating person. You just look like a dude. And if you look like a dude, no one's going to just remember you as a dominating factor. So dominate by having everything match. It's just looking pro. We'll go back into the dumpster. Don't have a dumpster car. Detail your car. Have You want to give your guys hours? Give them some hours detailing a truck. If not, get a mobile detailer in there. Work on Saturdays. Clean out those trucks. I'm telling you. That feel not only works for morale, but it just puts that presence out there. We've talked about it a thousand times. I know you can go and do that. If you can, be in the spotlight. Now, this is just like presence and just be everywhere. But what if there is a uh, town hall meeting? You wear your, your shirt to that. Or you look nice and maybe have business cards if somebody asks you what you do. Or what if there is a local city uh, commerce group? What if there is a BNI group? What if there is, um, you know, municipality groups and things like that, or you know, your city-wide uh, Facebook groups, or you know, your local city Facebook group newspaper things? What if you're everything and everywhere? What if you're everywhere? Yes, it costs money to be in a BNI group. Maybe you don't have the time commitment. Cool. It costs you three hundred bucks a year to be in a chamber of commerce. And go to every gala you can because they print a newsletter. What if you're going to different events and people all know who you are because of the work that you do? If you're everywhere, it again pr- puts you up on the other side. So even if somebody's there at some you know regular business meeting and they see you, they're like, oh man, who's that guy? Oh, there, there he is. There's Jersey again from XYZ. Uh, hey, Jersey, nice to meet you. And all of a sudden, you know everybody. And then they're your minions. They're the people who tell everybody else about you and how awesome you are. If you're everywhere, the spotlight is on you. Same reason that if there's speaking gigs, people will speak. And then they'll tell people that they spoke somewhere. Because it creates credibility. It creates kind of that uh, boost to where you are. And it creates dominance. And that's what we're trying to do. It's so being everywhere, but being in the spotlight is it now that doesn't mean that you have to be a great public speaker it doesn't but what it does mean is that you have to try and you have to put it in if you're working your nine to five and you hang it up and you don't want to do anything else that's awesome that's cool too man you can't do it wrong it's your business do it how you want that's how you dominate right and the last way i kind of want to talk about is um donating to silent auctions now this is another one that you are not going to reap the benefits but the other side of it is, um, if you listen to Dave Ramsey and everything else, the big thing that a lot of these people have is that uh, if you can help someone, that is the reason that you are as lucky as you are. Okay, Us as business owners, we know we make pretty all right money. right? We make pretty good money. If you're newer or it's winter and you're listening to this, you may be calling me a liar right now. But we make amazing money. We're very, very lucky to be where we are. And with that comes a little bit of responsibility to give back. But with that being said, there's always can be another benefit to it. And the big benefit is should be that you're helping people. I've donated to schools, regularly donate to a couple Catholic schools that are private. So they don't really have any other funds anyway, but they have these big 
Cal. Anyway, donate to those schools. My kids don't even go to those schools. Um, but I donate to basically anybody and everybody who ever has ever asked me to donate gift certificates. I'll donate. And here's the thing. You're getting a customer. You're get, donating your time. Yes. And I've probably had about 65% of the stuff I've put out there actually come back. A lot of people bid on it and then they give it to somebody for a gift or they lose it or whatever and it doesn't come back. Cool. Whatever. But um, the people who do become clients usually. But the other thing is, is that guess what? All those affluent people, just like we're talking about being everywhere, they're at these fundraisers. They're at these events, these charities, and they see you're giving. Man, this guy is just, this company cares. They care about the city. They care about, you know, school. They care about just giving, right? Getting that out there does actually help in your overall image. We're dominating the market. That's what we're trying to do. By doing that, it's it's being everywhere. And donating, it sounds ridiculous. And people are like, well, you're never making money. No, you won't. There's a lot of stuff you do in business to keep the ball rolling, to make it healthy. And that's one of them. Donate to school auctions or, again, city fundraisers, benefits. I've done a lot of those too where they're having a benefit for so-and-so who's a heck yes. Anybody who's ever asked me, and I tell everybody that I come in contact, if you ever need certificates or giveaways or things, we give out, uh, our value is a $250 window cleaning voucher or brush washing services in general, however you want to word it. We do two of them. So I give every single time $500 worth of services. Now, yes, there are also write-off benefits to that. And I'm no certified tax accountant, so you have to talk to your tax professional about that. But it's huge. When you can give away big, th- not $20 worth, of, then you just you don't waste your time. Make it worth your while. Am I losing $500? No, no. How much? What is $500? If both of them, and I told you we're really only getting back maybe 65%. And I bet you, I didn't run the numbers on this, but I bet you almost all of those people continue to use us for paying full price, right? But say that $500 takes you really five hours of work, okay? Five hours of work when you look at how much you pay your guys, maybe $40 $40 an hour or whatever it ends up being per man hour. It may not even be that high depending on your numbers, right? So really, I'm spending $200 on that, okay? So that could very very well be a huge part uh, where you can kind of uh, make that back. And it's not really donating, but you can certainly claim things and do other things. But you're being everywhere. If they always, always see your name, then you're always, always in the market. You're always, always in people's brains. You're in everybody's brains. And there's a lot of ways you could do that that aren't just sending out Facebook ads and mailers and everything else. Mailers are huge. I'm telling you. Door hangers are huge. That stuff is huge. But putting your brand on everything and being everywhere is the way that you dominate. If you dominate a market... You will be the one and only. You'll be the guy that when the news comes to town and they need to talk to somebody because somebody in the city over uh, fell or uh, had a you know uh, 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 new kid or uh, is franchised or pros or cons. If somebody's looking for an industry expert, they're going to contact you. And that's what you're looking for. That's how you dominate. Let's go out there and dominate. Just dominate. Anyway, we're going into fall uh, too, so if you guys need anything, please do. I'm trying to speed up that beginning. I'm so ingrained after 116 episodes of this. I'm so ingrained in how I do this. But um, but yeah, if you need anything, please do. Uh, you guys who shoot me text, absolutely epic. I really, really is because of you that I continue to do this. You guys who buy stuff through me is just really, uh, really makes this possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and if you want to buy, or you want to rep, or you just want to like virtual high five me, my number directs 862-312-2026, 862-312-2026. Save that number. Shoot me a text. Be like, yo, what's up? Your show sucks. Your show's cool. Your nose is crooked. What's up with your hair? Do whatever. I don't care. But uh, no, save that number though. When when it is time to buy, I really hope that I'm the one. Big or small, Anything. I want to be your dude because it all counts toward me. But anyway, if you do put an order in this week, uh, the code is dominate. 
If you tell me that code with your order, I will give you 5% off your order. Plus, it helps me and it doesn't cost you any extra. It actually costs you less. And if you're like the dude who has treated me like crap this past week uh, because he didn't follow directions, I'm not going to give you a discount if you don't order through me. That's the only way this works. It's the only way I can do it is that you order through me. So anyway, do that, would you? But uh, anyway, guys, if you are watching too on YouTube, make sure to give us a thumbs up because that shows me that people are actually caring. Uh, also, comments. The comments on uh, the busy season always drop down, so definitely comment. Share it if you can. Give us a review on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, anywhere else podcasts are available. And most importantly, let me be a rep man or ma'am. Go out there and dominate your market. Make a million bucks. Hopefully this fall is absolutely amazing for you. And until next week, go out there and be epic.